Unlike The Witch who started the Legendary Witches series we've been enjoying this month here on the podcast, the witch in this story really existed. Yet a legend is attached to her that makes her worthy of investigation. We'll need to head to King's Lynn in Norfolk in the 1570s and 80s because there's a building in the northwest corner of the Tuesday Marketplace which actually holds the key to exactly what we're looking at. Indeed, a diamond-shaped brick might catch your eye since a carved heart lies at its centre and at the centre of this story. So let's find out what Margaret Reed, aka Shady Meg, has to do with this strange brick and witchcraft in this week's episode of Fabulous Folklore. Hello there and welcome to Fabulous Folklore, the podcast for all things folklore, occult and just a bit weird. I'm your host, Icy Sedgwick, blogger, fantasy author and your guide into these rather mysterious realms. I've got some rare things to show you, so come on in, take a look around, but be careful not to touch anything. These things sometimes bite. Well, hello there and welcome back to Fabulous Folklore with me, your host, Icy Sedgwick. I think you can probably tell by now that my voice is mostly recovered. Although I've still got all like the whole post-Covid fatigue thing, which isn't massively fun. Didn't stop me doing about 18,000 steps on Sunday in London though, so there's that. I I will give give a very, very, very quick whistle-stop tour of my London trip. Went to see the Feminine Power exhibition at the British Museum, very good. Went to see the World of Stonehenge exhibition, not as good. And then on Sunday I went to the London Amphitheatre which you can visit in the basement of the Guildhall Art Gallery and I have posted photos of that on Instagram along with a video tour of it as well if you'd like to see that if London's a little bit out of your reach at the moment and then I went to Kew Gardens and walked around for about three hours looking at plants so yeah that was my weekend it was great so glad to be back in Newcastle because it's a little bit cooler but I always love going back to London particularly when I get to walk around taking photos of things to do with random bits of folklore because that is essentially my thing in life but we are going to finish off this month's theme of legendary witches with a witch who is real or at least a woman who is accused of being a witch who is real who has a rather interesting legend attached to her. Now, I have actually been to Kings Lynn and I have seen this particular brick in question. And a large part of the story in this particular post comes from G.M. Dixon's Folktales and Legends of Norfolk from 1987. So that was a booklet that I bought while I was in Norfolk. And obviously, because I like hearing legends of where I am, this is where I found it. So we're going to have a look at the tale of Margaret Reed, otherwise known as Shady Meg. And in this particular version of the legend, she lived in a tiny house on one of the alleys that led to the River Ouse. And in the 1570s and 1580s, her reputation as a witch preceded her. And the locals apparently only felt it was safe to discuss her after her death. Now, according to them, she'd inherited her powers from her aunt. And this aunt Agnes Shipwell died at 27 in nearby Grimston. And following her death, Margaret then moved to King's Lynn. And over the years, she acquired this reputation. And indeed, there are different versions of the story and some of them explain the reputation more than others. And this one's a little bit more of an in-depth version. But whispers spread about her apparently otherworldly powers and soon customers started to visit Margaret. And no one ever spoke of what went on in her house, but naturally, they gossiped about the snippets of things that they saw inside. And some of these things don't really seem too impressive to our eyes, because one example was the fact that a spider lived in the corner of her window. And it became an object of curiosity, because Meg made no effort to clear the web, so that apparently then became a source of gossip. Make of that what you will, but the spider will become important later. Now, according to G.M. Dixon, Meg could make things happen. For example, a shop owner found whole sacks of flour ruined by mice, and another man's dog died suddenly with no obvious cause for it. And these things were ultimately ascribed to Meg and her strange powers. And in some ways, they also went towards answering other questions because people wondered how she supported herself and others wondered what the strange smoke was that seemed to permanently emanate from her chimney. Now, naturally, the legend contains the same sort of snippets of her physical appearance that we see around figures like Mother Redcap and people described her scrawny neck and wispy hair. And it is, it, and it does feel like not fitting the stereotypical model of beauty does seem like cause enough to brand you a witch. Although, obviously, that wasn't an issue faced by Meg of Meldon because if you listen to the podcast that was old last week, I did actually include a link to a portrait of her in the blog post. So you can see that she actually wasn't your stereotypical look and witch, but obviously her main crime was 
financial acumen and a total lack of interest in her neighbour's welfare. But anyway, back to Shady Meg. So another Margaret, essentially. Now, because no one knew for definite what Meg actually did, and even those who visited her had little to say on the matter, local gossips took to watching her visitors, because that might yield clues as to what she did and how. And according to this version of the story, one of her visitors was a pretty young woman named Marion Harvey, who'd ended up pregnant outside of wedlock. And the rumour emerged that a man named Nick Kirk was the father. Worse, he dumped Marion in favour of another woman. Kirk seemed rather unbothered by the whole thing, but Marion wanted revenge. So she went to see Shady Meg. Now, according to the legend, the neighbours heard all kinds of mutterings from the house after her visit. What would happen next? Well, the rumours about Marion's visit did reach Kirk, but he basically laughed them off, because he clearly didn't believe in Shady Meg's powers. But her powers apparently believed in him, because a week later, severe chest and stomach pain struck him down, and he died three days later. Now, at this point... Kirk's parents blamed Shady Meg because obviously they'd heard the rumours and their suspicions about her involvement reached the authorities who finally made their way into Meg's cottage. Now, they might have indulged her in the past, we don't know, but with a death connected to her, obviously they had to finally look into things. And the authorities removed Meg from the house and searched the premises. Now, the J.M. Dixon book does mention like occult paraphernalia but doesn't specify what it is. But among the, the horde of things that they took out of the house, they did find a poppet where pins were stuck into the stomach and chest area of the figure, which was clearly that of a young man. Now, with such a clear suggestion of witchcraft, the authorities sentenced Margaret to trial by ducking. And here the soldiers secured her feet and hands, and they attached a line to her neck, and then they threw her into the river ooze. Now, at first she floated, and the assembled onlookers screamed that she must be a witch. And this is the problem with ducking, because if you sink, you drown, but then you're innocent because you sank, but you've drowned. But then if you float, you're a witch, so then you have to be executed. So it doesn't really have much of a win-win either way. Although the only thing is, obviously, if you sank and people were like, oh, you must be innocent, at least that would clear things for your family. But you certainly wouldn't benefit from it. But eventually, though, Shady Meg also sank into the river. Presumably, I'm guessing, once the water soaked into her clothes and obviously dragged her down from the weight of them. But the legend does tell us that she apparently yelled curses even as she sank. Now, the captain of the guard eventually ordered them to haul her back to the riverbank and the soldiers pulled on the rope that was attached to Meg's neck and dragged her up. Now, she did surface in the river and she was actually coughing and spluttering, so she clearly was still with us at that point. So the soldiers then dragged her out and marched her away to the jail. Because even though she sank, she had floated at first and because she also hadn't drowned, people decided that Shady Meg must be a witch after all. So a crowd gathered in the Tuesday marketplace of Kings Lynn on the morning of July 20th, 1590. Overnight, people had built a pyre and soldiers led Shady Meg to the stake. Once she was secured, they lit the fire. And I've read descriptions of how this actually goes down in terms of burning someone at the stake and it is really, really genuinely quite horrific. And I think it's horrific, but the onlookers thought this was wonderful entertainment and they watched trying to peer through the smoke to see Shady Meg burn. Apparently, they could snatch glimpses of her trying to free herself, but it was to no avail. Ultimately, the flames leapt ever higher and Meg screamed. A loud bang rang out in the marketplace and the crowd watched something fly out of the flames. Those near the back of the crowd saw that her heart had burst from her chest and hit the wall behind them. And some say that her heart actually rolled down one of the alleys to the river, steaming as it disappeared into the water. A week later, someone passed by the building and noticed a new diamond-shaped brick in the wall. A carved heart nestled in the centre of this diamond. It seemed that a spider had spun its web across the heart. Of course, we do have to wonder if that was the same spider from her house. Was it actually her familiar? But also, you can actually still see the brick now if you visit the marketplace. I can't remember which building it's above. Some of the articles that I read online said it was number 15. Some said it was 15 to 16. Another one said it was 17. So if you kind of head to that general part of the marketplace and look up, it's above one of the windows so you can see it. But was Meg really a witch? Ultimately, there's no way to know if she was a witch or not. And in some ways, I don't actually think that's the most important part of this story. And the, because ultimately, the legend certainly seems to think that she was. But we can't really take that at face value. Now, Reed's name does appear in some records that were found from 1738, noting that Margaret Reed was burnt for witchcraft in 1590. So we do have like a historical record of this person actually existing. 
but Willa Winsham notes that there are two potential Margaret Reads. And if you are interested in all things witchcraft and witch trial in England, I would highly recommend both of Willow's books, which is Accused and England's Witchcraft Trials, both very excellent books. Now, one of the potential Margaret Reads was an unmarried 22-year-old, and the other was Margaret Reed née Hammond, although no one really knows what happened to her husband, since he doesn't appear in this version of the legend, but he does appear in other versions of the legend. And Pete Widows actually suggests it's this older Margaret who's the more likely contender. Now, other versions of the story say that no one actually knows what Reed apparently did wrong. Others claim that the suspicious death of her husband was enough to secure the accusation of witchcraft. Other people, again, in other versions have said that she did apparently murder her husband by witchcraft. So it's interesting that in the J.M. Dixon version, she's actually trying to help essentially a customer who's been put in this really awkward position. But then these other versions, it's, no, no, she killed her own husband. So it's, it's one of those things where because there's so many whispers over the years and they've all taken on the different form we'll probably never really know what happened but it doesn't really seem to matter what actually happened because it's a spectacular chest bursting heart that's lived on through history more than any sense of actual witchcraft so all of the legends have that little bit in common and that's the bit that's important not necessarily what led up to it because there is actually another legend in which a housemaid learned that her mistress intended to leave her her fortune. She told her lover this, and then the mistress was murdered after she wrote her will. Now, unfortunately, the authorities arrested the housemaid and sentenced her to be burned at the stake. And apparently, it's the housemaid's heart that flew across the marketplace and hit the wall. And the article I read that from seemed to claim it was because she was actually innocent and it was the lover who'd committed murder, not her. So it's interesting how, again, there's no mention of witchcraft whatsoever in that one, but it's the sense of this heart flying across the marketplace. And I think that the reason why both of these stories have endured is because A, the brick in the wall appears to provide tangible evidence and B, the burning of witches in England was actually comparatively rare. So if you add the violence of an exploding heart to an already traumatic event, you've basically got the makings of a legend. So you might be going, hang on a minute, burning and witches, don't they go together quite a lot? And actually the answer is no. Because the burning of witches was surprisingly rare in England, but although it was obviously a common punishment in Scotland and mainland Europe, and part of the reason behind it was actually the cost of burning. So I do find it quite fascinating that it's almost like the really awful punishment essentially wasn't used because it was too expensive. And in 1645, it cost three pounds, three shillings and sixpence to burn a witch compared to one pound to hang her. I actually checked on an old money converter and that basically means that that's around £329 in 2017's money for burning compared to £104 for hanging. Willow Winsham notes that witches were often burned for treason so the burning was sentenced for the main crime and witchcraft was ultimately incidental. So this helps to explain the burning of the housemaid in the alternative legend because her crime was treachery not witchcraft. But ultimately, regardless of which story is true or whether Shady Meg was really a witch, we do have to remember that a real human being died a fairly unnecessary and brutal death at the hands of her fellow human beings. So what I would ask is that people please remember that before throwing around that god-awful we are the granddaughters of the witches you couldn't burn quote. Please do let me know what you think of this one in comparison with the other ones that we've looked at because obviously the Witcher Wookiee Hall by far is the most legendary because ultimately there is no evidence of her existence in the cave and obviously the whole Witch of Wookiee Hall burial, I mean the timing of that is just completely wrong anyway. Obviously we've got Mother Redcap where again we we have a sense that obviously Jenny Bingham existed but we've got no idea of knowing whether she was indeed actually the mother red cap of legend and indeed witch legend because there's the two of them and then of course we've got Meg of Meldon where obviously again she physically existed we know that she did and obviously the accusations of witchcraft while in her case didn't lead to any kind of downfall necessarily they did kind of get used to explain how she was basically doing better than I think people felt that she should have done although she does actually sound like a fairly unpleasant person as well. And then in this story of Margaret Reed, we do have a real person, but then we've got this really bizarre legend that's then been attached to her. So I would be interested to know what you think of all of these. As I've said before, there is more content on the Patreon this month about witches and legends and things like that. So if you're enjoying the kind of immersion into all things witchy, then please do check that out at the link below and then there'll probably be something in there to tickle your fancy as well. 
And next month we're actually going to be doing another plant theme because it is a while since we've actually looked at any plants and I thought because it is July, it's a nice way to kind of preserve a little bit of summer before we start heading into the rest of the year. So as I say, we will be having a look at plants. There may be poisonous ones because it's a while since I've done baneful plants, but we will see. And if you do have any requests, please do feel free to let me know at the link below. But I hope you've enjoyed this particular series. I've really enjoyed it. And I think at some point we will come back and obviously revisit witches, but we'll be looking at them more in like the historical sense rather than the legendary slant that we've had this month. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Please do remember that I am actually speaking at the next Folklore Library and Archive event, which is across the 2nd and 3rd of July on the topic of fairies. I have put the link to the website below so you can have a look at what's going on. It would be marvellous to see you there if possible. But other than that, I hope you have a marvellous week ahead and I'll see you next week. Cheerio. Well, thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, feel free to leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts because that helps other people find the show too. It also takes between four and six hours to research, write, record and edit these episodes. So if you want to help support my time in doing that, then you can buy me a coffee. Or you can join the Fabulous Folklore family on Patreon and enjoy extra benefits including exclusive episodes and articles and even illustrated talks. All the links you need are below and thanks in advance.